Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Hibbs, and I'm the superintendent of the Marlboro Township Public School District, located in Marlboro, New Jersey. I wanted to create a video that would educate our community about the park test that students will have to take in the 2014-2015 school year. PARC stands for the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers. More than 15 million students will take this test in the 2014-2015 school year, and I wanted to educate our community about what the test is like and what they can expect for our students. Here's what we know. Starting in grade three, students will take both a performance-based assessment and an end-of-year assessment every year in mathematics and English language arts literacy. The performance-based assessments will be given approximately 75% of the way through the school year. The end-of-year assessments will be given approximately 90% of the way through the school year. PARC has released sample tests. They are located right here where my arrow is. Currently, there are sample performance-based assessments for English language arts literacy and sample end-of-year assessments for mathematics. PARC plans to release sample performance-based assessments for mathematics and end-of-year assessments for English language arts literacy in the fall of 2014. In my opinion, it is extremely important not only to prepare our students to succeed on the content of the PARC assessments, that would be the Common Core State Standards, but our students must also understand how to navigate the test. To that end, this video will take you through a sample grade 8 end of year assessment in mathematics. I will not go over the answers for content, but rather I will show you how to navigate the test. First thing we'll do is click on Park Sample Tests, click the drop down for mathematics, and notice you have lots of options here starting with grade 3 end of year and ending with algebra 2. We're going to take the grade 8 end of year, but I want you to notice the answer key that's right here for you. The spring implementation does not grade for you. They are telling us that in the fall, that implementation will. Grade eight. There are two sections for a total of 32 questions. We're gonna start the test. Notice, this is the non-calculator part. There's 19 questions. I'm going to start the section. Before we begin, please notice all the way to the right, there is a folder labeled exhibits. If I click on that folder, what pops up is the assessment reference sheet. And as I scroll down, you can see I have the formula chart. This will be here for you throughout the entire test. If I want to eliminate it, I click the X and it goes away. And at any time, I can pull it back up. Please also notice the toolbar at the top, right where my arrow is. This would be the previous button. This would be the next button. Notice the previous arrow becomes blue when I navigate to question two. Easy way to navigate question to question. I'm gonna choose an answer for, for, number, for number two here, and then I'm gonna click the review button. I just chose any answer. Notice here that the review section allows you to see all of the questions in your section, and you can easily navigate to a question. So if I wanted to go right to question 19, I click view, and I'm right at question 19 of 19. If I wanna go back to question one, I simply click view next to question one, and there I am. Notice also that the status column gives you three different answers. First, I can see which questions did I not view, which questions did I view but not answer, and then of course, which questions did I answer. At the end of every section, you should review this to make sure that all your answers have the green check mark and say answered. When you wanna navigate back, I'm gonna to return to question. Well, notice the next button is the flag button. I'm going to click it, and then I'm gonna go back in. The flag button, in case you're stuck on a problem, don't wanna spend any more time, or simply wanna come back and check, you can flag it, and in the review section, it will tell you it's flagged. Okay? When you do your final check, you'll go back and see these questions. If I return to question, and I unclick the review, or the flag, and then go back to review, notice it's gone. Return to question. This is going to be your select tool, it's your pointer. At any point in time, if you're doing something and you want to enter a multiple choice answer, uh, you can simply click this and go in. Okay? I want to show you this the highlight. You can double click on a word or you can simply drag it and let it go. And what pops up is your highlighter. 
we have the options of yellow, pink, and blue. I'm going to choose pink. So enter only your solution. If I want to unhighlight it, I can highlight it again, and I can click the text unhighlighter and it goes away. I love this tool. It can work virtually throughout the entire assessment that I found, and it's a great way to highlight the important information. Next, Protractor. Notice you have circles on either end that allow you to manipulate. Make sure you line it up correctly. Next, a centimeter ruler. Same exact way. Last but not least is going to be an answer eliminator. This is only live on multiple choice questions. So notice when I click on this for number two, it says select your answer, which decimal is equivalent to six elevenths? The correct answer uh, for number two is D. Okay, so I would eliminate the answers that I thought were not correct. And then I'd have to go back to my pointer. I could select the correct answer. If I wanted to highlight any important information, well, I know I'm working with a decimal, and I also know that I'm working with 6 elevenths. Okay? Going back to question one. Question one is a toolbar. This may look like a calculator, but it certainly is not. In the second section, the calculator will come right at the top. You have to know what everything here means. Clear all, undo, redo, backspace, plus sign, minus sign, time sign, division sign, fraction, mixed number, power, square root, equal, approximately equal. Then I have a whole series of drop downs that I can click and look. All of your numbers along with comma, decimal point, and constant pi. If I click on it again, it hides. I have all of my signs. I'm going to drop down to the plus minus, negative, times dot, division slash, dollar sign, degree sign, percent sign, exponents and roots, power, square root, cubed, relations, equal, not equal, similar, not similar, less than, greater than, approximately equal, not approximately equal, less than or equal, greater than or equal, congruent, not congruent. Geometry, ray, line, line segment, parallel, perpendicular, angle, angle measure, triangle, parallelogram, and circle, and last but not least, groups, parentheses, bracket, brace, and absolute value. You need to know how to use and manipulate everything in here, okay? Uh, number one, you actually have to put in a fraction as your answer, and when you do that, the fraction comes up, and you can see it's easily manipulated between the numerator and denominator, and the correct answer is 7 over 2, and that would be your answer. Okay? Not a calculator, but a very large toolbar. Know and understand how to use. Let's go to question 2. Okay, question 2 we already did. Multiple choice, answer eliminator, and of course your highlighter, and then select your answer. Question 3. Please notice the highlighted vocabulary. It's your roadmap to success. Select all that apply. That means you could have one or you could have more than one. The correct answers here are A and E. If you wanted to use your answer eliminator on the rest, you certainly could. To undo an answer, you simply click it again. That's question three. Question four. Okay, select each correct statement. Question four has three correct answers, A, B, and D. And then you know what you could do with the rest. Highlight and answer eliminate. Five, a text box. You must answer. So you have, you click on it, it turns live. Uh, for question five, you would put your answer in. And notice when you put your answer in, an X comes up. If I click the X, it goes away. Watch what happens if I click the B button. 
invalid input. So make sure that you are entering what you should enter. If not, it will tell you that you did it wrong. Question six. This is a great example right out of the, out of the gate here of using the control minus and control plus buttons. If I hit control minus on the computer, watch what happens. I zoom out. And that way I can see everything because I, I really can't see the top portion here. So the control minus allows me to see that. Uh, this is an example of you have information, which is a graph, and then you need to make decisions as to what, what the answers would be. And you can have multiple. Okay, I'm, I'm going to click on the correct answers here. This one does not have more than one correct answer, but I have seen uh, check boxes that have. So just be careful. Question seven. Okay, is exactly the same thing. You have to actually go through and figure out what should be checked. Question eight. Question eight's multiple choice. You could highlight and use your answer eliminator. Question nine, highlighted uh, roadmap, both. Which equation has both? So for question nine, uh, there's only one correct answer and the answer would be C. Question 10. Notice your roadmap uh, vocabulary or words must be true for question 10. And I would choose the one that had to be true. Question 11, I have two text boxes. Okay, just be careful with those. Question 12, what we have here is that we have a part A and a part B and there are drop downs for each. So drop down for part A at top followed by and then the same down here. You would need to choose what made sense. So the first part is a reflection across the x-axis, uh, translation three units to the right, uh, then we have a rotation clockwise, and then we have the reflection across the x-axis. You would need to choose all four. In park assessments, four is the total number of questions I've seen either in a part A, part B, or part A, part B, part C, part D. But four really seems to be the limit. Question 13, roadmap directive, all. You know how to do that one. Question 14 is also multiple choice. You know what to do. Okay, another great example. If I hit my control minus, I'm gonna zoom out and I can see them all at once. Okay, it's too far. Okay, next one is going to be question 16. Uh, question 16 is going to ask you uh, to take a look at the different lines and you're gonna have to plot. So you're gonna have to be careful. Um, it says to graph a line, select line S and plot two points on the coordinate plane and a line will be drawn through the points. So notice that the arrow is next to the blue so when I click next to the purple, it goes there, and then point P. So if I wanted to, uh, to graph a line, I simply need to do two points. And I'm not going to do this for you because you can play with it and figure it out. But I would do two, and then a line would draw through it. So for instance, there's your line. That's obviously not correct. Uh, I'm just showing you how it works. And if I wanted to do T and do a line, and notice P is just a point. Okay, that's obviously not correct. You would have to do it for content, but I wanted to show you how it worked. But you have to be live on each of these with the arrow to make it go. Question 17 is gonna be another box where you actually have to check. Okay, I'm not gonna go through this. You can figure it out. Question 18 is also a toolbar, which you've seen before. Question 19 is a point on the number line, okay? Point on the number line. So what you need to do is just simply choose your point and it goes live. Notice that as I move the point around, there's only one at a time. Now, this is question 19 of 19 on the non-calculator part. At this point, I would click review to ensure that my status was answered for every one. If I had flagged any, I would go back now if I had extra time. Being that I'm just showing you how this works, 
I am going to go on. I'm going to continue. I'm going to click yes. There are 13 questions in the calculator part. I'm going to start the section. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in a teeny bit, control plus so I can see it bigger. Notice I have a text box. I think this is the first text box that has given me a label. I'm going to highlight the label in centimeters. Uh, there, there may also be a dollar sign in front and sometimes they don't give you a label at all. It all depends on the question. Okay. This is question two. Notice I have a multiple choice followed by the toolbar. And I should show you right here while I'm thinking about it, the calculator. Notice the eighth grade calculator. It is different than the seventh grade calculator. You must know every function and how to utilize it. Okay, so make sure you familiarize yourself with the calculator. Question three, select each correct statement. I love the highlighter, I'm going pink again. Question four, okay, great example of what I was talking about before, part A, B, C, and D. You have a text box, two drop downs, two text boxes, and one final text box. So four parts of the question with multiples in two of them. Be careful. Question five, uh, okay, which statement is true? Uh, so for question five, you would, you would choose the correct statement. Okay, question six, select all that apply, road mark directive. Question seven, I'm gonna zoom out for a sec here. So you have to actually graph, uh, select a place on the grid to plot each point, and you would need to do that correctly. So if you wanna plot, you simply plot wherever you, you feel it necessary. That was just a click, there's nothing to highlight or navigate between. But notice after that, you're going to have a part B, C, and D for multiple choice. And you could always use your answer eliminator here. Notice how it, it goes live when you hover, okay? I'm gonna zoom back in, control plus. Uh, notice here we have, uh, for question uh, eight, we have drop downs. I'm not gonna answer it, you know how to do that at this point. Question nine, you have a part A and part B, multiple choice and a text box. Question 10, I like this one. Uh, what you have to do here is you actually have to order these in the correct order. And you, it just, it's as simple as just actually dragging them and moving them around, which I think is neat. You can't drag them off the, the line here, but you can put them in the correct order. And that's the correct order. Question 11, I'm gonna zoom out, control minus, that way I can see everything. Multiple choice followed by the toolbar. Question 12, I'm gonna zoom back in. Uh, you have to use the graph again, select two points in the coordinate plane and a line will be drawn for question 12. And it looks like the answer would be here and then uh, here, the line goes through. Question 13, Liz saw the number shown on her calculator screen and then they give you a multiple choice. I'm on question 13 of 13, so at this point I would review. Obviously I have a lot of not answered, but I viewed everything and if I was actually taking the test, my status would be all answered or I'd be going back now and looking at my flag problems. Return to question and I would submit. And that is the grade eight end of year assessment. My advice is to actually look at the grade seven and grade six and even all of the videos that we have because we have no idea what these assessments will look like. We only have samples and to be prepared, I would look at them all. Okay, thank you, good luck, have a great day.